Hey, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. This is a painting show showing you how to get over your intuitions and just get out there and paint. Today we're going to work on some large format pairs. And the purpose of this show is not necessarily to paint a pair, but to talk about space and form. So let's get to it. A lot of the colors that I use, uh, I've got the palette listed here, titanium white, quinacridone violet, cad red light, cad yellow deep, cad yellow light, carbazole violet, French ultramarine blue, the permanent green is kind of encroaching on that, but it's there, sap green, and I'm actually using black. Now, I've talked to you before about, nope, don't ever use black. Well, rules are made to be broken, and that's what I'm going to do for the background today. Okay, you can see the reference photo that I took is, is very well lit. There's a light background, but you know what? That's just not what I felt like painting. I wanted to paint something that was a little more enveloping. So I'm going to start with the black now. I'm just scrubbing it in. You know, when you paint, it's kind of like, uh, kind of like playing the piano. You're, you're practicing. You know you've got a huge, difficult passage coming up. And if you're timid about it, it's going to show. So just go ahead and put it down, see what happens. You can really have some great miracles if you just put it down. I'm using a little medium to help the paint move faster. I wanted to talk to you too about the format of this show is that it's live to tape so that everything you see here is it's real time. Uh, the amount of time that it takes me to do this is the amount of time that it's going to take you at home. When you get a big canvas like this, you've got to kind of hang on to it. I'm about ready to push it off the easel. As you can see, the paint's very, very thin. This is going to be my first layer. Just scrubbing it in. I think all the excitement and all the energy that's going in here will be evident in subsequent layers, even though it'll be smoothed out. Okay, I'm about out of medium. I use that to help move the paint. I'm going to go ahead and grab some more of that. This product helps thin the paint and it helps it dry a little bit faster. You probably don't usually see anybody working on something this large on TV. But it's fun to get a good sense of scale. These, these three pairs, I picked them out about two weeks ago at the grocery store. So if you look at the still life setup, you can tell that they've been around a while. And um, they didn't take the trip to the studio real well. But I, I did them basically for placement and for light. The colors, especially on the green pair, has changed significantly since I first started painting it. OK, when I sketched this out, I was really conscious of where these pairs sat in space and how they were going to be placed on the canvas. So the, the photograph I took of the setup is not necessarily what I'm going to use for the final product. I'm going to put out a little more medium. So you just scrub it in as best you can until you get the whole background covered. We're going to work 
today in three stages. I'll show you a first statement, which is just covering the canvas, a second statement, which would be layer two after we've let it dry, and a third statement, which is close to the final painting. So you're starting to see what the silhouette is of these pairs. Let's see. They're kind of down here, here, here. Turns into a whole different thing when you use black instead of the background that's already there. I'm using a huge, huge brush. Because you think about it, if you're painting something on a large scale, a little tiny brush would take you forever to cover the canvas. So I could probably go up a size with this, but this one just felt good. I was always taught that you use a brush, the size of the brush that you use would be the one that's a little bit uncomfortable for you. You should always go with one a little bit bigger than what's comfortable for you. Helps you stay loose. And I really work on staying loose. My teacher would, uh, once I got to a certain point, he would say, well, you know, it's a nice likeness, but is it a painting? And I think by staying loose, I can make sure that it does look like it's a painting when it's through, and it's not just a reproduction of what I'm looking at. You know, when you start painting, there, there are a couple stages I went through. First, I was imitating everything that I saw. So I learned to paint by looking at other people's paintings, other people's uh, photographs, and that's how I taught myself to paint. And then I got to the point where it was more, instead of just straight imitation, it was, um, stage two was more of a variation on a theme. So I would start interpreting what I saw. And finally, when you start composing, you get to the, the third stage, then you know you're, you're on to something because you start to come up with your own new ideas. Now, whether it's a small canvas or a big canvas, you get to the bottom, you got to pick it up and lift it. So that's basically what I'm going to do to get this stuff down here. Since this is the first statement, am I worried about whether this is perfect or covered? No. We also only have about 25, 30 minutes to get this first statement done. So I'm going to put it in quickly and roughly. The nice thing about that is some happy accidents occur when I'm not trying to be too perfect. I hope you can see getting down here. So now what's starting to emerge is the outline of the pairs. Okay, very rough, but it's got lots of good energy. You can see that at least that there are three pairs here and that that's what's going on. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each pair systematically. If you look over at my reference photo, I've got this, well, this used to be green, green pair, brown pair, and a red pair. I'm going to go ahead and mix colors that are a dark, medium, and light for each pair. And that's how we're going to create the basic form. I'm going to go ahead and throw it, well, I can keep some of this, some of this black. I'll just stick it up here. And I knew I was going to take up a lot of room on my, my palette, so I just went ahead and put a sheet of black there, and that way I can just get rid of it and have a clean slate to work on. Every day I start with a clean palette. That way um, I've got a fresh start at everything that I'm doing. Okay, some more medium. Uh, you can see I use a lot of this medium. It really helps the paint move. Okay, what do I want to start with? Red, green, well, you know what? I, I'm going to start with red because I, I like it. Okay. Last time we talked about alizarin crimson. It's not a good light fast color, so I have switched now to quinacridone violet. And what I mean by light fast is that over the test of time and over years, alizarin is going to turn uh, dark and eventually blacken. Don't want your painting that to happen to your painting. So I'm using quinacridone violet, and I'll, I'll warm that up a bit. And that's been a good substitute. 
So I'm going to mix some clodacridone violet and some carbazol violet, and that's going to give me the dark color of my pear. Okay. Now on the palette, until you bring it out, it almost looks black. But once you, once you move it out a little bit, you can see. Okay. I'm loosely mixing this. You can tell that it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like what my husband calls deli cut sandwiches. You know, I don't quite cut them all the way through. And the same thing with the paint. I don't quite mix the paint in the same way either. I just kind of loosely mix it. I think it adds interest. Okay. I'm using a lot of brushes. If you haven't seen the show before, you can tell that I, I use tons of brushes, and that's because I don't clean my brushes with turpentine. I use canola oil and uh, a dishwashing detergent. And that way I'm not using the toxic mediums on my brushes and I don't have that smell or the fumes. So in order to do that, I gotta use a lot of brushes through the whole process. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this dark, see this nice violet, this is the dark area of the red pear. And there's some dark there. There's a little bit of dark on the bottom. And maybe a little bit dark on the stem. Now, the stem's not even the same color, but I don't care. It's got a little dark there, and I like the purple, so I'm going to put it down. Um, while I'm at it, um, I could actually go, you know, I don't always do the same thing twice. Sometimes I'll work on one pair and just move at a time. At other times, I'll work on all the darks together, then all the lights. Um, it may be better to be consistent, but I just do it according to my mood. So, um, but I am going to go ahead and finish the one pair at a time. Now I'm going to go to a medium red, and I will mix that, leaving this brush for later. Okay, so I'm going to take some more carbazol violet, or clinacridone violet, and I'm going to mix that with cad red light. I'm going to turn it into some sort of fire engine type red. And I, I really, really like this color. I think this will be a good body color. What do I mean by body color? Well, when you're working with the form, you've got a body tone, you've got uh, body shadows, cast shadows, highlights. And there are essentially five different ways that you can look at the form and things that you need to represent in order to make it look that it's three-dimensional. And uh, when I first learned all this, there were, all that just made me tired to have to learn all the ways you could make form. Basically, if you look at the object, you look at something and say, okay, it's lighter here, it's darker there, it's just as simple as that. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's great to eventually learn, but if you're just getting started and you want to know how to paint something, just really, really look at it, really examine it. The pear's really light right here, right here it's dark, and there it's kind of medium. If you stick with that kind of um, look and put that down there, then you're going to be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put the body color in. I'm not blending, I'm just putting it down. It's uh, right here. You know what? I see that there was a little bit of dark right here, so I'm just going to add that. Okay. I am scribbling my way to a good painting. I'm not worried about anything, really, at this point. I'm just putting down the color. Okay, you know what? There's a little bit of dark right at the edges, too. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I really like lost edges. Rembrandt's just... He's just, you know, the master of doing these lost edges. And I can see where I missed a little black, and things won't make sense unless I put that in. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in. See how this purple and black just kind of fall into each other? That's a nice, soft, lost edge. 
Okay, back to the red. It does help to have a certain order of, of what you're doing, how you're going to put the paint down. Um, when, you, when you have a basic plan, that's great because it really helps you keep consistent. But you know what? If you see something else that's fun, then just go ahead and put it down. That's, that's all part of the process. Oh, I like that red. That is nice. Okay, well it's got to be a little bit lighter in the light part, so I'm going to go ahead and get some cad red light. You know, I, and I could mix it, but I'm just going to grab it straight from the top. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Does it look pear color? No. Do I care? No. Don't worry about that either. Eventually it will. For the, the initial statement, I'm more concerned about form and getting something to start to look three-dimensional. I'm also going with the form that helps create it. You notice I start painting up and down, but then I went ahead and moved side to side. That really helps it come together. Okay, just shoving in some red here. Now, in order to make a red lighter, if you just add white, it's going to turn pink and it just uh, loses all of its potency. So basically, if I want to make something lighter and make it red, I'm going to need to add orange or yellow in order to make it still have that warmth to it. So I'm grabbing yet another brush. This is a little loud, but it's going to work. Because it is going to be next to the white. And if you don't have this next to it, it won't, it won't read. OK, that's kind of where the highlight goes there. Like in that. Okay, now for the highlight area, if I were to put white down just by itself, it would be too cold. Oops. Okay, what I did was, normally I wipe my knife off before I mix it with my colors to keep it pure. But, you know, this is like real world. I forgot. So, um, so I contaminated it with some red. It's not too bad, so I'm going to just add some yellow to it and see what happens. If it doesn't work, I just get a fresh pile. Okay. Yeah, that works. Okay, that's going to be my lighter color. You can see I brought a lot of brushes because I'll need them by the time I get to the other colors. Okay, so here's a highlight. Starting to get some form there. You know, I'm looking at this and uh, even though it's lighter here, it's a little bit a little bit darker there because it's the pear is casting its own shadow. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this quinacridone stuff. Start filling it in. I'm going side to side again. That helps create the form. We've talked before that a lot of times I'll use a mirror so that I can check my work and I don't have to get back. Today, because the piece is so large, I don't have a mirror, so I'm actually going to walk back and take a look at it. Yeah, even in its really crude state, it's starting to get some form. So I can, I, I can see that it's working. I'm happy with its progress. Add a little more cad red light. Okay. I'm not going to take the time to blend this yet. I'm going to see how we do with the other two pairs in the time that we have. And if we can get that far later, great. If not, we'll just keep moving on.
I will save these for other red applications. Now we're going to go with the green pear. Well, I'm going to mix the green with uh, some sort of red because it's opposite on the color wheel, and it's going to give it a nice richness for the dark shadow color. So I think I'll take some uh, sap green. Terra, Terra Verde is also a really nice color. And you know what? Um, I can go ahead and use this brush that's dirty with purple and just mix it right into the sap. So what I had was a dirty brush with purple paint on it. I'm going to stick it right in the sap grain. And let's see. It's darker again. Again, the light's coming this way. So this is darker over here. And yeah, it might be a little dark, but that's okay. I'll just put some more down. See what see what I think later. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, a little dark there. You know what? I forgot the stem too on the. Uh, we'll do all those together though. I think. Okay, so it's dark over there. You know what's really neat is I see on the bottom of this, uh, a lot of times when you look at my paintings, you'll see color surprises. And some of them are there because I actually saw them and other because I invented them. But I really like how this green pair underneath has bits of red at the very bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in right now because it's just beautiful. And what I see in nature, God, I couldn't even have invented that. It's just so nice. Okay, so I just threw in a stroke of that. Okay, I'm going to need to make this a lot lighter. Otherwise, it's, it's going to be as bad as those brown spots on the, on the actual still life. So I will add some light to the, to the green. Okay, that's much better. Okay, so I mixed a great color, not nearly enough paint. So I'm going to add some more now and just do a whole bunch. So I had some of the white mixture that had some yellow in it, plus the sap green, plus a little bit of the carbazole violet. That toned it down quite a bit. This is going to make a nice medium color. Okay. Now I picked up this brush and I was going to use it and it didn't feel right. You get to the point where you can tell whether a brush is going to feel right or not. When you have um, the shorter amount of distance you have between the ferrule, which is this part right here, and the top of this brush, the more control you have. I'm not at the stage of painting where I want any control at all. I want it to just be loose, let it go. Um, if I do this, I'll be nitpicking it. So this is, this is too stiff for me at this point. So what I'm going to do is grab something that's got a little more, yeah. And besides, I've got, I've got a big area to cover. So I need to grab a bigger, you know, a bigger brush. And I need a little more liquid to let this stuff move. Okay. This is better. This is, see, there's a lot, lot bigger, a lot more distance. Let's see if I like this color. Yep, I like it. I like that when that happens. It's the pits when it doesn't happen. Okay. I'm even mixing it with the other color. So this is a nice good body color. And I see that this medium tone is like right here. And there is a little bit of medium right here. It does get lighter, but I'm going to go ahead and just put mix it right up to the edge. 
That's important. I really like the, how this green is harmonizing with this violet and this red. They've got to be friends. And in order to give that sense of space and push and pull, they have to be comfortable next to each other. There's another thing that I'm working with, that, that I'm experimenting with on this painting, is that cool colors tend to recede and warm colors come forward. Now, I knew this when I set this up, but the red pair is in back. It's a, it's a warm pair. Normally, you would put a red, red pair out in front here because it's already coming forward. So, but what I wanted to do was create some tension, to create some drama. So um, this little guy is going to fight and try to come back. And what I need to do, my job, is to temper this so that it works. So we'll see at the end if it works or if it doesn't. Meanwhile, they are very harmonious colors together, so that's important. When they don't get along, nobody's happy. Okay, I like that. I need to make yet another lighter color. I'm going to have to add some yellow to this, not just white. I need to squeeze out some more white. I use a very soft white. It helps flow better. Okay. I'm going to mix a lighter color. Can you see how I'm mixing the paint? I pick it up with the palette knife and then I smash it. So it's basically just pick it up and smash it. I use my trusty toilet paper to wipe off the knife. I get some clean color, a little more yellow. Okay, now before I put it down on the canvas, I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to test it and see if that's, this is looking good. Okay, it's, this is good because it's, it's a subtle change. It's not huge. Um, I'm thinking even more, or maybe, maybe not necessarily. Sometimes when I think I need to make something lighter or darker, that's not the case. I need to make something either warmer or cooler. So I'm actually going to add a little bit of yellow to this. And I contaminated the yellow just because. Yeah, I like that. Big difference. See, it wasn't that, what, I didn't add white. I didn't make it any lighter, but I made it a lot warmer. So I think that's going to really work. And if it doesn't, I'll keep adjusting it till it does. Okay, another brush. Yeah, that's happy. This is a good color day. You know, you have good hair days. This is a good color day. I like these in their raw state because they really are expressive. Show the brushwork. Sometimes I need to, uh, you know, I look at some of the things that I've done and I need to maybe do two paintings and keep one that's fresh like this and, and, and go on with another one. Okay, when you think about the shape of this, I've got dark hair, medium, another medium, but it's warmer. And then I have to have some sort of light in the middle to make this thing have form. All my, uh, I don't know how far we're into the show, but I, I start off being very careful and keeping everything clean. And, and uh, by now, you can see that I'm just mixing all over the page. And that's really what happens when I paint. So that's lighter. That's good. Nice transition. I mean, don't be afraid to just, you know, you got to kind of beat on this canvas to make it work. It picked up a little red. I don't care. Pears have a lot of red and orange in them. That, that works for me. OK. 
Okay. I'll just grab some of this too because it's nice and warm. I'm varying the shapes too. I don't want it, everything to be uniform. Okay, these have to have a nice little edge here, so I'm going to fix the edge. And then that needs to be, I'm going to actually overstate the white because once you mix the white with other things, it's hard to get the white back. So I need some more. I use buckets of this stuff. Okay, again, I did not use straight white. I had a little bit of green on the brush. I didn't care about that or on the knife. But what I'm doing is I'm making pretty much a, a white mixture for the very center, and then we'll sneak up on it. So I'll overstate the white, and then I'll blend in the green. Okay. Right now, I'm being careful not to touch the green part yet. I'm not ready. I'm not ready to hang out with these guys. To me, that looks a little cold. A little yellow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this little yellow warmed it up quite a bit. And actually, you know, the highlight only goes to about right here. And when I'm painting, I lose my place. You know, I, it happens. And I just see if I can get, get it back. Okay, that's a little too, too much. Okay. Yeah, I, I really overstated that highlight, so I'm just going to put that here and see how we're doing as far as getting a form together. Okay, right now I'm going to stand back. Again, you've got to keep standing back, especially when they're big like this, to take a look at your work. So I'm going to stand back. Yeah, they're starting to get some form. Okay, we'll quick scrub in the brown. I don't have any brown on my palette, but basically what I'm going to do is take some Cad Yellow Deep, which is an orangey color, and some red, a little bit of purple. Ooh. That's wild. It's a great color, but it's not what I was going for. Um, I'm going to add a little blue to tone that down. That's a nice little mellow color. Okay. Now the shadow side of the brown one, the green is casting a shadow over here. So I'm going to make this really dark. I'm going to just make it purple. It's not purple, but I like it. And um, it'll be happy. You can make the sky orange. You can make the sky pink. If you like it, go for it. As you can see, I'm not a purist with color. Okay, so that's a nice little cast shadow. That's darker than everything there. I'm going to go ahead and put all my darks in where real, real dark stuff. Oh, I see that it's dark up here too. And we need to start making things lighter. I'm going to try and wrap this one up so I can show you second statements on some of the other paintings. Red. That's nice little bit of lighter here. See, I'm not adding white. I'm, at, I'm making things warmer rather than making things lighter. Okay, that's pretty good. And in order to get something really light over here, I had too much on my brush. Didn't like that. 
Okay, that's called mud. Can I just tell you that's called mud? That's from not keeping your stuff clean. So I have to do, get a clean one and add a lighter color. See, I don't know why I think that when I'm making mud, if I just put it on that much thicker, I'm going to make, I'm going to cover it up. But what happens is you just make that much thicker mud. So, uh, oh, that's much better. Now I have to pretty much leave that alone until it dries because I played with it too much. Same thing like this. There's a little bit of light hitting here. This one's a little bit lighter under the bottom. And I'm going to try and get that brown one blocked in. Okay, so what I'm grabbing here is that brown mixture I made. Where's the dark side of the pear? Well, it's in a couple places. Ooh, that's, that's not the color I was going for. It's a lot cooler and more violet. So I'm going to add some red to it. And the reason it did that is because I had it mixed with white. Shouldn't have done that, but I did. Okay. Ooh, there's some nice bright red-orange stuff down here. Even brighter than what I'm putting down. Okay, need some more medium. Again, if I just start adding white to this, it's just going to make things more violet. So when I'm making this pear lighter, I'm going to need to add more orange and yellow. Okay, so I'm just going to put like a shock of orange just because, whew, nobody would see a pair of that color. But that's okay. When, by the time you mix it, it'll be gone. Yeah, that's better. That's more of a, a more of the kind of brown that I wanted. Warmer. Now this brush... I really should switch because it's like way too small for what I'm doing. Ooh, I like that. The little splatter kind of was cool. Okay. So you can see that this is already t starting to take some shape even though it's in its rough, raw state too. All Now there was a time when, uh, when I first started painting that, God, I'd be in class and everybody in class would be way ahead of me and it would take me forever to get anything done. And um, so I was wondering, and, and, and my husband even mentioned, boy, that's really ambitious to do all that in a, in a class. But all I can say is that over, over time, you do pick up speed and along with the speed, you pick up confidence and you don't worry about making mistakes. You still don't like it when it happens, but you don't worry about it, you just paint. Okay, this is starting to, I like this raw scribble thing. Um, starting to really take some shape. Okay, so now it's time again for me to step back, take a look, see where I'm at at the process. Okay, this is starting to take some form too. I could just throw a bunch of light over here. And if I took a brush and blended it, it would actually look like something. Okay. 
Okay, there's a lighter part of the pear hair. See, there's not much of a highlight here, so I can just put it in straight white. It's just light, it's not bright. Okay, and there's light over here, and there's light over here. So this is starting to get a rhythm. All right, now what I'm gonna do is take a brush, big one, and uh, these are great house painting brushes. Get the cheap ones, and you scrub the heck out of this so that it will start to blend. These, these have blended more because they've already got some stuff going on, but I'm gonna go with the form, Blend and wipe, blend and wipe. If you don't, then you're just gonna make yourself a mess. You'll have more mud than you know what to do with. And you know what? Blend over into the other pair. Don't worry about whether you're commingling. This is your first statement. This is not a final product. So it's, um, if, if you don't blend and make these nice soft edges, when you go back into it after it's dried, you're going to have big ridges. And if you change your mind about the drawing, you're stuck. So here you go. Now, I blended out most of that highlight, but oh well. I'll come back into it. See, now the original strokes were down like this. I need to keep going. I've got some more red. I'm going to blend this a little bit. I'm going to kind of leave this one alone. It's not that bad a shape. This one needs some serious help. OK, what did I tell you to wipe and um, and blend. Well, I blended a lot way too much before I started wiping my brush, and I made kind of a mess. So I need to take my own advice. Okay, and then I'll. What I would do, too, while it was still wet, is add a little bit of red and stuff to the background so that it's not just static. But in the interest of time, we're going to move on to another piece. So let's, let's see what this looks like for the first statement. It's a good basic start. We've a really good basic start. It's a good foundation. I know that when I go back in later and it's dried, I can put, I can glaze over the top of it and get a, really get this thing to work. I love how this red, we talked about the push and the pull of the red. Um, I love how this one's struggling to compete with that. It's, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. I may bring this back for another show when it's done so you guys can see what it looks like. Um, this brown one will definitely go into the background by the time the whole thing's over. And uh, the green one, uh, he's got to be the center of interest about right here. So this is a really good start. Now I'm going to show you step two, what I would do for the next stage of the painting. So let's move this one out of the way. There we go. Okay, let's see. Let's work on the brown one. Now, where's the brown one in this stage of the game? I've been, I've, I've approached the canvas twice on this. So I did the first layer that you just saw. And this is the second layer. So now, what, what can I do to make this, this brown one sing? Well, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the reference photo for that, see where the light was hitting it. OK, well, highlight would definitely help. 
Some, some different diff distance between this and here, make this a different space. That would really help pull it together. So it's, it's not always, I, sometimes I think I need to make things darker for it to work or to give that separation. But I think really if I added some light or some warmth right here, that would really help. So that's where I'm going with that. I'm going to go ahead and find a, a red. Red, red seems to cure everything. A little red brush. And the, the caution that I have is to not use a color that I've already got in here. I really need to, to do some separation. So maybe, hmm, we'll try a little bit of warming it up a little bit. Yeah, that I think is, I just put a little color there. That's just, I think, too close to what's going on with the pear. What I could do is glaze over this whole thing. Again, glazing in my friend. Now I can use the control brush. It's okay now. Let's see, I've got some liquid out. And I think I'll stick some Carbazol Violet. Yeah. Oh, and since I didn't like that red, just kind of wipe it off with a paper towel. Paper towels I, can, I use to wipe off the painting. Um, toilet paper is for the knife. The toilet paper will clean the knife thoroughly, but, uh, where, but if you do use that on the painting, you're going to leave a lot of lint, where the paper towels seem to be OK. They don't do that. So I'm going to take, this was just straight Carbazol Violet, lots of medium. Oh, that's too purple. It's cool, but it's too purple. Okay, so let's see. I didn't like that. So I'm going to try a little bit warmer red. Yeah, that's better. You know, <laughs> you want to know what's funny? I really like the red pear, and it, I'm turning this one into the red pear. I have to really caution against doing that. So um, i got to go back to brown, and that's really hard because I, I like the red one. Okay. You know when you take a test and uh, they tell you if you know the answer, go ahead and just put it down. If you don't, skip ahead and go to the next one. Well, this isn't working for me. And um, I could play around with a lot of things before I know what to do. So I'm actually going to move on to another point. And, and this is kind of what I do with the whole thing. I always paint what I know. And by the time I get to the part that I don't know, I figure out what to do with it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave this alone because I think I could really make a mess of it. Start with the highlights and work backwards. So that's where I'm going now. As long as I've been painting, I, I still run into trouble. And it's how, it's not that I get better at, uh, it's how I get out of it, or, or how creative I am as far as uh, solutions that I come up with, not necessarily the fact that I don't have any problems. Okay. I'm running out of clean space on my palette. So that's, at this point, if I were to leave my palette like this and not do anything about it, my paintings would look as bad as my palette because you're mixing stuff here. It doesn't get any better when you translate it over to the, to the other side. So I'm going to take my straight colors. And what I mean by straight colors are colors that I have not mixed with anything or are only slightly contaminated. And I'm going to move these up here. I'm going to throw away the other so I have room to mix. I'm, I'm simply out of room. You know, when I paint big, I almost should have a, a palette that, that accommodates the size of what I'm working on. Okay. Hello. Just lost half the grain. Got a little black there. Okay. I'm just going to throw all this away, give myself a clean slate. And what that does is it gives me a clear head for my next mix. OK. So what I was going to do <laughs> before all that started is put some highlights down. 
And you know what? I turn around and look at that and go, wow, that wasn't so bad, even though I was sniveling about uh, what I was doing on the other side of that pair. It wasn't that, wasn't that bad. I just put it in the wrong place. Okay. Even this is contaminated because I didn't clean my knife good enough. Okay, there's a little bit of... The highlights I put on thicker, they're going to grab and catch the light better if you put them on thicker. And also, be brave with your highlights. Put them on like you mean it. Don't, don't just, if you just like little timid thing, you know, it's like whatever. Um, they have no impact. So, you know, put them down. The worst thing that happens is that they don't work, and you have to, you know, blend them away. Okay, that's nice. And also there's some reflected light over here. And you know what? That's probably what the answer is to this little section over here is a little reflected light. Okay. And nothing the little orange won't, won't hurt fix over here. That had too much white in it, so it's looking real chalky to me. Okay. Putting a highlight there. Going back to the red. Yeah, that's better. Okay, there's still no separation there. So I'm thinking it needs more of a cool, it needs more cool, more of a green. That's better. There we go. And I like just that little raw, little bit of green right there. That's happy. Sometimes I'm working on things that I think are broken and they're not. And if I would work on another area, I'd figure out what was wrong. So this here helped have some separation. I could play around with that all day and still not get anywhere. It, this would take another couple hours. Okay, so basically you got cool and warm. That's starting to work, starting to get some contrast going there and a sense of space. It would take probably, oh, another, in real time, another four to six hours to get it to the point of the finished product. If you go over here and look at this green pair, this one's just about done, or done. I think I'm going to leave it alone for now. You've got a nice balance of warm against cool. There's a lot of subtlety, a lot of red, a lot of the spots that came up in the, pair, in the pair that I threw in there. And so you've got this nice calm space and this, because of the brush strokes, it almost appears to be spinning. So you've got the solid form plus the sense of movement. Every painting has a, a sense of rhythm and movement. So this really, really worked. I've also done one in red that is at a, uh, what I call a first statement stage, and we will. It's not coming off the board real easy. <laughs> we have little elves here that help. <laughs> okay. This is this red pair. I'll just put it right next to this one. This, this red pair is at a first state, statement stage. So this is basically the same as the big painting I did. You can see basically how far I got in one, one time at the canvas. I'll go ahead and put that one back. Okay. Notice that on the red background, it definitely has, um, has red and green, so we've got that push and pull of those colors, 
And on this one, we had the green and red. So you definitely need the contrast of the complements in order to get that going. OK, so that you can see basically how long it takes to get to that state. This is real life, real world painting, or at least for me, as far as how long it takes. Now, the next segment that we have is called, What Was I Thinking? And what I like to do is show you guys a painting that I've been working on that was, um, that didn't quite work out. Sometimes there's studies. I'll sit there and just crank out a bunch of work in about an hour just to practice. And sometimes there's something I really put a serious amount of time and effort into, and they still don't work. And I throw them away or cut them up or whatever I do. This one, this one ah, doesn't work on a lot of love. <laughs> this one reminds me of those, uh, I don't know, horror movies from the uh, 50s where the heads cut off the, uh, I don't know, it reminds me of a, of a Hitchcock movie where the head's cut off. It's the composition is just really, really bad. I cut, I cut him off at his neck and his chin. It was a study. I, t I took, um, uh, my goal was to have 100 faces and, and just paint one after another, you know, take an hour on each one and see how far I could get. And part of that goal was not just in, in getting the paint down, but also in good composition. And this one just really didn't work on a lot of different level, levels. And, and it doesn't look like the person that I was trying to paint either. Um, let's see, what are we dreaming? <laughs> okay, I found one good thing. There's, you should always have nice dark against light, light against dark. And so and th that's the one good thing I could find about it. Anyway. When they're that bad, I just want to make sure that they're really, really dead. So, um, God, I, I can't set fire to that in here because um, we can't burn anything in the studio. But I'm going to throw it in the trash can. And anything that's really bad, I do throw in the trash can. Sometimes I cut it up. Sometimes I stomp on it. But this one's got to go. There's no fixing one. We, we've done some in other episodes where I could fix them, and there are things that I could do. But this one's got to go. It's gone. And, not, and to make sure they're dead, you know, these pears didn't make it past the last still life either. They, um, you know, I had them for, what, two weeks? So it took me a long time to get these paintings prepared. So to make sure that it's dead and nobody takes that painting and does anything with it, we're going to throw the dead pears on top of it. Ew. Ew. Just in case anybody had any thoughts of taking it. Too bad you guys can't see inside this trash can. It's really cool. And um, there. Now I feel better. You know, my teacher used to say that if you had p bad paintings out there and you sold them or gave them away, you couldn't pay good money to get them back later. And I know because I know my grandma had some that she hangs in her house that are horrible. And um, so if I could get them back and throw them out, I definitely would. So, <laughs> so I hope today that in all this, I've encouraged you, I've shown you that you, you can make mistakes and just enjoy the painting process. That is so much fun. Just go ahead and do it, put it down, see what happens. If you don't like it, you can burn it, throw it out. Don't give it away though, because you, you, you have trouble getting, away, getting it back later. So just get out there, give your wall some soul, and have fun. And what I'm going to do now is just finish up the little piece here. <laughs>